Hey friends, welcome back. This is Ashley and Kevin. <laughs> yeah, with Uncommon Roots Homestead. And we are out here at the farm, obviously, um, chasing babies and kittens and talking about what is next. So we want, we know that we want to um, be able to, specifically with our cows, we know that we want to be able to rotationally graze them. And so we've been talking about what it looks like to build separate pastures. And so what Kevin and I were just talking about is this space right here. Um, how much space do you think that is? That's probably an acre. Okay. An acre. So there is so there's an acre up here um, that we're gonna fence off and we we're trying to figure out where we would put a structure. So whenever you have livestock in an area, you don't necessarily need a structure, they just need some kind of a shelter. So they have some shade, they have some trees, but we'd like to have a structure just because I milk and she is our dairy cow. Um, so if we're gonna have her over here, it's nice to be able to milk like if it's raining or something, which I don't want to go into like the woods and milk. So that's what we're talking about. Um, I think this will be like the third pasture that we do because we're talking about down there doing a second pasture like right at the front of the one they're in right now. So all the planning, all the things feels like a lot. It's always a lot, but <laughs> it's fun. This is stuff we love. Yeah. So it doesn't, at the end of the day, it's a lot of work, but it doesn't feel like too much. Yeah, that's true. And then but. we're also, we were also talking about quail. And where we'll put quail. You show them the quail area? Yeah, I'll take you guys over there. Okay, so my, my thought is that we'll put quail over here by the garage on this side. So this is the, let's see, south, south side of the garage, south-ish. So it gets a pretty good amount of shade. It gets some sun. I think it'd be perfect for quail. And then it also is gonna offer protection on one side. So there are a lot of different way, ways to raise kale. We want quail for their eggs. I love quail eggs. We buy them whenever they're at our local um, like co-op. We just love them. They're a lot creamier. They're great on pizza. Um, we'll like crack them onto pizza and then eat them that way. They have a lot of nutritional value. They actually have like, it, like three quail egg would be equal to one chicken egg, but the amount of nutrients in the quail egg is like superior to a chicken egg. So they're really great for you. Also quail start laying at seven weeks. So I've been super interested in them for a long time. In fact, before we got chickens, I was interested in quail. It's just harder to actually get your hands on quail. Nobody around here sells them or like breeds them that I could find. So what I'm gonna be doing actually is ordering hatching eggs and then hatching them here and then putting them here. So there are a couple of different ways that you can house quail. So unlike chickens, they actually don't want a ton of space. They are ground birds for lack of a better term, but they do fly, um, but they like to live in like closed, areas so they'll often like in the wild they'll hide under bushes and they'll kind of like pigeonhole themselves in uh, and so when you're creating a quail environment a lot of times what people do well they'll create these um, like big spaces that have a lot of branches and a lot of places for them to hide but because we want them for the purpose of eggs I don't really want that because they don't lay in a nest they'll just lay anywhere it's kind of like ducks you can give them a nest but they're probably not gonna lay in there so I want to be, be sure that however we set up their enclosure, it is the best for them, right? That they're going to be happy and healthy, but also that it makes it easier for us to retrieve our goal, which is to get quail eggs. I mean, not have to like go in and hunt for them. So what I've been reading is that getting them elevated off the ground is a really good option. It actually keeps them safer from predators um, and it they thrive, right? So we will still add a lot of like organic materials and things into it, but we're going to bring them up off the ground. So the goal is to have them be like three feet high and then build this two foot kind of rectangular enclosure that's really long. Um, and then we're gonna split it and have like half be our blue layers and half be our um, like our speckled layers. That's kind of my thought process right now because we do wanna kind of keep them pure, so to speak, so that I continue to get blue eggs. We could just put them all together and I would probably get a mix for a while and then eventually it would taper out because the blue, it comes to, it's a Cornix, uh, Cornix um, quail 
and the blue is a recessive gene and so the more that you kind of like breed that back into a, a general society the less likely you are going to be to be sustaining the blue so anyways i want to keep blue because who doesn't want blue quail eggs so what we're going to do is that like two foot three feet foot off the ground two foot high probably three feet wide and then almost the entire length of the garage so they have a lot of room to run so the reason we don't want to go more than two feet high is that you actually have to stay under two feet or above six feet because what will happen is they're very flighty they get scared and so if they get scared and jump they actually will decapitate themselves so we want to make sure that we don't put them in a situation where they're going to get hurt um, but that they still have enough room to run and do things like that so I've seen these built with like wooden frames and then actually just being like mesh or wire across all four sides that way the droppings just fall to the ground that's interesting to me because we're actually really close to the compost pile here so I could potentially like put something like a tarp underneath and then just pull that over to the compost pile um, I'm not 100% sure what we're gonna do there I know we're gonna add a lot of branches and a lot of like greenery in so that they feel like they're in a wild environment um but we'll kind of just see how it goes but like i said quail start laying eggs at seven weeks which is way sooner than chickens and they actually can be processed around them too so they're a really sustainable breed you could grow out your quail have them lay eggs have them hatch those eggs and then process them and the meat doesn't change quality so you can process your quail on at seven weeks or at seven months and it's going to be the same quality meat so those things are all really interesting to us i don't know we know a lot of people who like tried quail and then got out of it and that it just wasn't for them so we're gonna see for now i'm really interested and i'm really excited to get quail we are going to be getting our hatching eggs at the end of november which means we'll be 17 days to hatch those out that puts us into december then we'll kind of keep them in a brooder for a couple of weeks so they'll probably move out here we might keep them until they're small right so quail full grown are only like this big so we might keep them in like a protected brooder until march till it starts warming up the only reason we're ordering in november and not in the spring is because our preferred breeder is um they're discontinuing quail so we want to make sure we get some of their eggs before they you know stop selling them be nice So I guess today's video is more about planning than anything else. Um, I think it's important to take time and just be on your farm or your homestead or you know wherever you have your gardening space or, or whatever you're doing right now. It's important to just take some time and like walk around and dream. And Kevin and I do it pretty frequently. I'd say like once every other week, we'll just take an afternoon and walk the farm and talk about what projects we have coming up, what we wanna do next, what we don't wanna do, anything we wanna change. And it's really helpful because it helps us to reevaluate what's working and what's not working on a really consistent basis so that we don't, you know, get all the way to the end of a season and then just feel overwhelmed by things that aren't how we want them. Instead, we kinda of try to keep like a steady pace of what's next. <laughs> and so for us, now that we know that that quail breeder is discontinuing those quail, we know that we want to get this space prepared so we still have a lot of time it's only september um but it gives us a good idea of like okay if we're going to put quail here what else do we need to change what else do we need to take into consideration um and then with the the cows my parents are actually going to be taking crusher to their house but in the event that we need to separate him sooner or if something happens and we need to bring him back we need to have a second pasture ready so that he can move into that because we're getting to the point where he's gonna have to be separated from Daisy pretty soon. We're hoping Jeannie is bred back. So that's why we're kind of talking about those two things specifically right now. But we also spend a lot of time like walking through the garden. I wanna take you guys with us um, in the next couple of weeks as we walk through the garden and talk about what um, kind of what's next. Where are we gonna go next year? What do we wanna change? What do we wanna do the same? How do we wanna grow? Are we going to expand? Are we not? Are we going to make it smaller. There are so many options. Um, and every time I think about this space that we have, so we have 14 acres here on our homestead in the beautiful uh, East Tennessee. And it's easy sometimes to look at all of this and be like, man, 14 acres is not that much. There's so many people who have so much more space and they have so many like more things that they're able to do with their space. But we, 
have really approached our homesteading journey with a use every bit type of mentality where we've started in areas and really tried to optimize our use of those areas and really tried to squeeze every last ounce that we can out of these spaces. And I think what it's gonna result in is 14 acres of just abundance at the end of all of this because we're not we're not leaving big empty places right like we've got the cows and then we're gonna we're gonna be um rotating them across four or five pastures once we get to the end of the day right like once all of those plans are have come to fruition we've got the garden and we've got the orchard and we've got the berries and these things are all kind of like woven together into this beautiful potager space where permaculture has really become a foundation of what we're doing trying to bring um annuals and perennials together and flowers and edibles and and just making it a space that we can really enjoy that will thrive year over year that isn't going to it'll actually require less work every year as it becomes established and developed and then also kind of like moving into the spaces and transitioning from one space to another you know we've got i'm on the other side of the garage but right on the other on the other side of this that's where the potager garden is so now we've got the garage is kind of the centerpiece where the quail will be here and I'll do something over in this space, maybe more fruit trees, you know, I'll, I'll do something over here. I don't want any space to go to waste. And so it's fun to take a step back and to dream about what's next or to think about what animals do we want to add or, you know, are there animals that we want to remove? Is there something that we've learned that we don't love? And, and right now the answer is no, but we're early in our journey. We are, you know, less than a year into this we bought this property february of 2020 but we didn't start building the farm here until really february of 2021 so right now it's september of 2021 it hasn't been that long this is still a work in progress and i'm glad that we get to bring you with us what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. We're not going to get there very fast if that's how you're going. Back row? Ready to walk? It's easy to dream and plan when this is the view right outside our front door. I can't wait to live here. <laughs> what about you? For sure. Are you excited? You excited? Yeah? <laughs> he just wants to walk. What are you looking at? What do you see out this window? What do you like to look at? Do you see your chickens? Okay, these Jerusalem artichokes, um, also known as sunchokes, are stunning. And this is the first time that I've actually smelled one of the flowers. They're so sweet and fragrant. Like, I can't even describe what it smells like, but it's so, it's like very sweet, almost like candy-ish, little bit of vanilla. Wow. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Not only are they pretty, and they produce these tubers that are super nutrient dense and um, great for filling you up, right? They're starch. 
but also they have these beautiful flowers that are super fragrant. That's like a win, 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 win. So while we're over here, this is another space that I think next spring, like maybe this winter, next spring, I want to start to really think about. So this space gets a lot of nice sun. Um, I'm standing in partial shade. This area right here was in the sun until probably an hour ago. Um, so this is, the house is right here. This is where the trampoline is, right by the chicken yard. Um, and it's just, we'll probably move the trampoline because the trampoline's in like amazing sun. But this space is really flat. It's just, there's a lot of opportunity down here. So I definitely don't wanna neglect this space, but I wanna use it well. And we've talked through a couple of options. We've talked about maybe um, if we decide to leave the pond on the property, we've talked about fencing around the pond, maybe having a company come in and do some cleanup there, getting it back to a functioning pond, um, putting a fence around it, maybe a couple ducks in there, and then actually fencing this section in as like a backyard or like a, a children's yard type of thing. I feel like it gets too much sun for that. Not that my kids aren't worth it, but it's it's better for the kids to play in an area that's mostly shade anyways because we don't want them to get sunburned and things like that. So I'm thinking that this area down here might make a really great perennial garden, kind of like a tea garden, more like cottage garden style, a lot of stone and natural elements. Um, I think it would be stunning. And also it's just like steps from the house. So I would be able to look out over it from the kitchen window, which I would love. So that's kind of, I'm like dreaming about this space. I don't, the thing is with perennials, like if I want to do a perennial garden, I want to get those in now. Like I want to get them in as soon as possible because perennials take a little bit to get established. They say a perennial garden takes 10 years to really come to fruition and be as great as it's going to be. Um, and so I don't want to wait, right? I don't want to wait three years and then decide I want this to be a perennial garden. So we're trying to kind of, we'll wait until the construction is done. We'll watch this space for a couple of weeks or months as we live here and then start to really put together a plan of like what we want to do with this space and where we want ultimately our kids to be playing. Do we want to merge those together? Do we want the, like a, a cottage garden style where the kids spend their time? Maybe, maybe. So. That's why I love these like, no agenda, let's dream about what's next, kind of walks on the farm. The opportunities are endless. All right, friends, we're gonna go get something cold to drink. Hopefully, our kids will take a nap in the car. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the farm here today. You always have a space on our homestead. Until next time. Follow us on Instagram. <laughs> like, subscribe. Bye.